It has all come down to this. It is race time. The final of unlimited boat racing for the Albert Lee Appliance Seafair Cup. And here are your boats. It's the Les Schwab team's Red Dot Graham Trucking, Alberto West Coast Collision Peters and May, the Graham Trucking 2 boat, our gang racing Fox Plumbing, and Performance Tools Boitano Homes. These are the boats in unlimited racing and the final for the Albert Lee Appliance Seafair Cup. The Albert Lee Appliance Seafair Cup Championship Race is presented by Whirlpool and KitchenAid. Create a luxury kitchen for less. Find great savings on KitchenAid and Whirlpool appliances at Albert Lee. And is presented for Seafair by Albert Lee Appliance. We're more than just high end for over 75 years. On a day that's been delayed by a couple of accidents, we are just two and a half minutes away from the big championship here at Seafair. Starter clock brought to you by J.P. Morgan Chase, a proud sponsor of Seafair. Chase making it easy for your personal and business banking needs to start and run strong. Look at that, 88 degrees. The wind is picking up a bit, some light chop on the water, but all bets are off when it comes to Seafair's championship and the lake. And here are the drivers who will contend with these conditions and each other. It is John Zimmerman in the Team Red Dot boat, J. Michael Kelly in Graham Trucking, and Graham Trucking Company's Cal Phipps. Alexis is with John Zimmerman. Yeah, that's right. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the young guns, Steve, but everybody over here, Les Schwab Tires, Team Red Dot, say don't count them out. John Zimmerman jumped in the cockpit about 20 minutes ago. I grabbed him before, tried to get him to tell me his game plan. He said, no way. My lips are sealed. It did help to talk to Chip Hanauer earlier today, though. Took his advice, had a closed-door meeting with his crew. They made some decisions, and they're feeling pretty good. All right, Alexis, a full field today. Here's Tom Thompson at the controls of the West Coast Collision Boat, Jimmy Shane in the Alberto, and Chris Francis. You've been watching that team all day. Steve, in Madison, Jimmy Shane jumped the start. J. Michael Kelly won the race. In Detroit, J. Michael Kelly jumped the start, and Shane won the race. Now you add J John Zimmerman to the mix. It's who's going to time this the best? That's who's going to win this race. And here are the final two drivers in the championship race. Jeff Bernard with our gang racing and Mike Webster in the performance tools. Boitano Holmes boat. The boats on the water. They are getting set. Just a little over one minute to go. For the final time today here at Seafair 2014, we are live around the world on CairoTV.com. And now the voice of unlimited hydroplane racing, Mark Allen. Thank you, Steve. One minute to go before the start. We have had testing, Chip. We have had preliminary heats. We've had qualifying. This is what we're here for, what everybody in that pit area came here for Sunday afternoon. Nothing else matters. We've had crashes. We've had disappointments. We've had jump guns. This is where they issued the check. Nothing else matters. John Zimmerman may well have secured the inside lane. It looks like Jimmy Shane and the Oberto will be in lane number two. I I think maybe if you look at the, up there with the red oh, boat, uh, that would Jay be Michael Kelly. This is going to be Jeff Bernard that we're looking at. Jeff Bernard in the Fox Plumbing and I 21. Saw, I saw he and he's going slow. I there's a you, traffic jam up here. There's a traffic jam, but I think J. Michael Kelly is in a really nice spot. He got inside of Old Boy Alberto, and he needed to be there. Here they come. They're early, eight seconds to go. It's not that far a run down the front straightaway. Sure. Jeff Bernard's got the inside. Next to him is J. Michael Kelly, and then Cal Phipps, and Jimmy Shane is going to be at least out in lane four. And J. Michael Kelly either was a perfect start or just over. He had to push it. He has a little boat that's not as good. He had to push the line. He might have pushed it a little bit over. We're going to have to wait and see. But Kelly is first off the turn up the back stretch with John Zimmerman and Jeff Bernard in hot pursuit. John Zimmerman on the outside of those two and then on in lane four it's the old boy Alberto. He's moved into third place at this point but he's chasing Kelly and John Zimmerman. And right now J. Michael Kelly's hoping 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 he didn't jump the gun. He doesn't know. They're probably looking at the pictures. All he's going to do is go as fast as he can until he hears that news. J. Michael Kelly coming down. There's Jimmy Shane and the Oboy Alberto. Just a lot of water with John Zimmerman coming up and beside him. But John Zimmerman not going to be able to catch it. He has fallen back to fourth place. J. Michael Kelly opens up about almost a rooster tail lead over Jimmy Shane. Jimmy is on the outside of him, but he has been able to move in from lane four, Chip. It is, but I'm just dying to hear if that was a legal start because if it was a legal start, J. Michael Kelly 
might have really pulled something here, but I think Alberto is starting to run him down on the outside. Now. Sure. Yeah, Jimmy Shane is starting to reel him in just a little bit. Step by step as they're halfway up the back stretch. Jeff Bernard still on the inside lane, but he is running third, John Zimmerman fourth. And you're looking at J. Michael Kelly in the overhead shot, about a two-thirds rooster tail lead over the guy who is right next to him now, and that is Jimmy Shane in the old boy Alberto. You see him just pulling up, and he's actually closed some ground now as they come to the end of lap two, Chip. He has closed ground, and again, if J. Michael Kelly can hang on, he will have done to Jimmy Shane what Jimmy Shane did to Steve David last year. But again, I have questions about that start, if he was legal or not. Kelly got way high as he came down across the Genesee Gap just before the entrance to the south turn, but he's put the foot back into it. He lost a little ground to Shane, but now has picked it up in the turn. And again, it looks like Alberto's got some speed on the outside. He's gaining on him. He's within a half a rooster tail. J. Michael Kelly has got to push, push with everything he's got to hold off the Alberto. Yeah, and he can't, he can't move out. He doesn't have really a legal boat uh, count over a lap. Oh, but he he's did, gonna, he's he gonna did gonna just that. He, he took him way out. Just what you said he shouldn't do <laughs> legally. Uh, you can't take a guy, if you're on the inside, you can't run him out to the beach. But um, And it was a good start. Yes. So so oh, I mean, start. This Michael is Kelly. a great boat race, great. folks. Once again, Seattle delivers. The underdog makes a great start. And this is going to be great. And Shane has run him down a little bit. He's closed the gap as they came down the front straightaway. Jeff Bernard still in third place and still on the inside, but your race right now is to see if Jimmy Shane can run down J. Michael Kelly, still about a two-thirds of a rooster tail lead. We're here on lap number four. If J. Michael can pull this off, it's a, it's a magnificent driving job, and it could be the start of a great week because he's going to try to run like eight classes at the Stock Lab Org Nationals this coming weekend, next weekend in Moses Lake. He's got to keep this together, and if he does, you will have watched one of the great driving performances of all of Seattle history. Farther and farther outside, but Jeff Bernard has taken advantage of that coming on the inside, and he is just a few boat lengths behind Jimmy Shane. They can't see each other, but J. Michael Kelly, after lap four, still in the lead, but now the gap closes a little bit farther, and Jimmy Shane still has time enough to run down J. Michael Kelly. If he can do it, he's going to have to do it on the backstretch. J. Michael Kelly is going to just have to grit his teeth, drive the boat over rough water faster than he probably is comfortable doing, and if he does, the Albert Lee Cup will be his, and you're going to see an amazingly happy young man. J. Michael Kelly in the lead, but now but John Zimmerman. Zimmerman. John Zimmerman on the inside of him. He moved to the inside, and we don't see Jimmy Shane. He's hidden in the rooster tail. He's now in third. As we go through the north turn, you can see Shane is now in third. He's about a rooster tail behind. Here you come. It's a drag race off the finish line. We've got a broken canard. That's one of the problem that, that uh, Shane has, a broken canard. And it's Mike Kelly. J. Michael Kelly. There you see the canard. That's a wing in the front that the driver uses to control the bow of the boat. It broke on the last lap. You saw a amazingly talented young race driver with a boat less than his competition make a perfect start, get on the inside, and hold off a faster boat. My hat's off to J. Michael Kelly and the Graham truck. Well, he had the strategy. He did have the strategy, and when I talked to him down in the pits, he just had his teeth gritted. He just wanted this, and he knew what he had to do, and he did it exactly as it had to be done. Four races on the H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Series so far. Two winners. Jimmy Shane has won two. Mike Kelly has won two. Stand by, everybody. Now they're saying possible one-minute penalty. And I think that could on be... number one. No. I think what that could be is Mark... Wright said, boy, he can't push him out because that's illegal. Now, we don't know that, but he did push him out pretty far to the outside. Uh, and prior, to, be... prior to the start, Kelly was going pretty slow, too. That That's that's also a one-minute call. So. Now, I was so caught up with the winner, um, Zimmerman didn't catch Alberto, did he? At no. the finish line? No. So it would be Alberto. Oh, he did. Oh, no, I he, think he did. He passed Alberto. Yes, yes absolutely. Okay, yeah. so, I mean... Either one of these guys, it's a dark horse now, again in Seattle. We could have watched a race that came for all the world down to Jay Michael and Jimmy Shane, and at the last minute, 
when we wait to see what happens, somebody could have sneaked, sneaked in here and actually taken this away from both of them, and that guy could be John Zimmerman. John Zimmerman, you know, we talked to him beforehand, and he said, "Any, what did he say? Anything can happen. Yeah. I said, you know, the odds makers probably have you down third place. He goes, anything can happen. It might have. We can take a look at the start. We can take a look at the start. So it's got to be zero before you see both go past those buoys. Oh. oh, oh. And it looked like a couple of boats. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is my word. Because remember, I, I, yeah, I, I know. it just didn't look good to me, and I kept thinking, I don't know. And when they said legal, I was surprised. Can we look at that again? We Now, we're at just a touch of an angle back from that. So, again, we were told from the truck that they heard officials say clean start, but there are other fish to fry here as we wait this is really going to have to be sorted out on a day. See, Jay Michael says, hey, I won. He's on top of his cowling, and he is ready to celebrate. Uh, he may be in for a big disappointment. We can see that starting in maybe in slow motion, because I think if we look inside, I think we see Zimmerman being yeah. really clean, really for Cal, sure clean. Cal Phipps was caught up in that, too. Yeah, well, so. If we can watch that start again. And the black Graham There's Cooley. John Zimmerman. We really need to find out from the officials. They're sorting it out like all sports now. They go to the video, the replay, they go right. to the replay and Don't see. And I, right. Well, he's he got a big grin on his he face. He won. <laughs> Jamie. You know who's won? Okay, the fans here in Seattle right, right. because they saw some great races. Here's today. the start. Okay, now. And can we stop it when it gets to zero? Uh, well, it's still too close for me to call. Let's head well, down to the pits right now yeah. and see what John Zimmerman thinks happened. Alexis Smith is with him. Yeah, John, we're sorting out a, a lot of potential uh, penalties in your mind. How do you think the race finished? Uh, I think it worked out pretty well for us. We had a really bad start. You know, I was uh, all ready to cut the course every toward the start and get inside everybody, and Tommy was right there. He was legal, but, you know, uh, it kind of pinned us out there. So we had a bad start. It worked with what we had, and, and uh, even if we finish third, that's pretty good. All right, there you go, and uh, hopefully we're going to get all this sorted out soon. Uh, a lot of folks uh, jumping up and down and, and kisses for you and uh, some celebrating, so we'll have to stand by and see. All right, I say hi to my son, Jack, who's watching at home. Hi, Jack. Love you. All right, thanks a lot, John. Thanks. Now over to Chris Francis with J. Michael Kelly, who was celebrating on his boat a moment ago, Chris. Yeah, tight on the dock, and they were celebrating. They believe they've won this Seafair Albert Lee Cup. Uh, tell me about the run, the start, especially because that's what's in doubt, and there's all kinds of things going on back there. Oh, you know, it's like a chess game out there, and we put ourselves, uh, we didn't show our hand that today, and that worked out exactly how we planned it in the truck. And, you know, Tom Anderson sat down with me, and we came up with the strategy to get this U1 Graham trucking on the inside of these faster boats and it, it paid off and we won Seafair. I mean, they're talking about a one minute penalty. I don't think they've decided anything official yet, but they're looking at the tape for pushing out the number six. And you, what did, what did you see from your vantage point? Well, I was out front and I don't think they can make a call on me. Um, I had the lead, I had overlap. Um, I bumped out to lane four and five. I'm allowed to go anywhere I want. And if he made, if he made ground up on me, I was out in lane four. So I didn't go any wider than that. Um, it'd be a, a real shame if they did call me on it. Um, but no matter what, these guys are number one here in Seattle. And there's a reason. I got the best crew. I've got Graham Trucking. I got Ted Porter. I got Tom Anderson. The list goes on and on. And I'm just a lucky guy that gets to do this. And you know, if I get to do this in front of all my family and friends, and this is my home race, so it, this is this is very special to me. Yeah, you know, I can tell he's emotional, and we will revisit this if there is a penalty call. But right now, they believe they've won this race. Guys, back to you. They do indeed believe they have won, and you can tell it's an emotional moment for Jay Michael. This is, the, this is the thing I hated more than anything is not knowing. Yeah. Your stomach is literally being ripped apart worse than before the heat you, because it's out of your hands now. Yeah. Sam Cole is the chairman of H1 Unlimited, and he and the rest of the crew, the rest of the staff, they're going over these videotapes. They're looking at every single thing to make sure they can determine who, in fact, is the, the correct call on the winner here. And, Mark, as we watch this thing, between the start and what might possibly happen, I couldn't tell you right now who to point to and say this is the winning driver and winning boat. Well, I think when we looked at that replay several times, uh, it looked to me like Jeff Bernard on the inside yep. was over. J. Michael Kelly 
in the one was over and his teammate Cal Phipps. And they're gonna we're gonna take a look at it again. But who was clean with Zimmerman? Watch for yeah. Zimmerman. And watch, watch on the right hand side of the screen because when that clock hits zero, you've got black, red, and white, and those guys are it's over. still not zero. Those guys are over. Now the zero. And watch. And if we can do it another keep couple going, of frames. Keep going. Keep, there he is. There's Zimmerman. And Clean as a whistle. Zimmerman was the fourth starter, and he looked to be maybe the only, the first one who was legal. Well, th this is, as you said, Chip, this has got to be difficult on those teams <laughs> and the drivers and, and everyone who wants, you know, when the guy crosses the finish line, you want to say, that is the winner. And that's one of the difficult things about this sport that sometimes it just doesn't quite work out that way. Yeah, but. You know, in fairness to the sport, we see that now in all sports. How yeah. many times now in your game? What's the game? Football. 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 Yeah. Um, do they go? You know, and you're you're waiting. You know, was was it all right? And you just sit there and, and grit your teeth and hope. The boats are out of the water. They're back for the most part, putting being put back on the trailers, and we're still awaiting word from H1 as to who is going to claim the trophy. And Let's if if G. Michael doesn't win I think he's gonna be in tears uh, I, I could tell you know when I was down there talking to him he was full of emotion he was you know a a tightly wound athlete ready to explode and he did it he might have made a small mistake and it's gonna kill him and until boat problems and uh, breakage of, uh, of part of their boat the Alberto was right there in that race the entire time Alexa Smith is there with the Alberto group as they had to just kind of watch as the Alberto had to slow down after uh, they broke part of the boat. Yeah, we're uh, actually taking a look at that number six, the shark right now. You can see that canard that is in a couple pieces there. So that came apart. Obviously, that's going to slow down Jimmy Shane. And just looking at the faces on the crew, obviously not the finish that they wanted today. I can also see quite a few of them on the on the shore there. But Jimmy Shane looks like they're having a little powwow, uh, you know. I think they had a decent run this weekend. This is not how they wanted things to end. They've got more damage they need to fix now. And uh, yeah, overall vibe is certainly uh, disappointed with Team Alberto. Can just the water cause that? Just bouncing around on the water, the, oh. the stresses put on that boat oh. break that canard? Just the water, yeah, absolutely. Anybody who's ever water skied, you know, when you water ski, you're water skiing between, I don't know what, 20 and 28, 30 miles an hour. When you fall, you can feel what the damage that water does. You know, when I was racing cars, guys always said, um, it was, you know, racing on the water. You got a nice, big, comfortable water to drop into. But the wall in race cars doesn't grab the car. Right. It skids along. Let's head back to the pits. Chris Francis standing by with Jeff Bernard, another one of those uh, drivers involved in this whole situation, Chris. Well, a, a guy who ran a heck of a race. We, we're just not sure where he's going to end up. And I know you feel good about what you did. What did you see at the start? And, and what did you see through, throughout the race here? Uh, it was a big five liter heat during the warm-up period everybody was everywhere I I kind of had to make some moves that I don't want to make on my friends but uh, we knew we needed lane one to even have a shot I'd love to come out of here with a podium finish but I don't you know fourth place I drove my heart out um, Mike was out in like lane five with the Alberto so I had clean room but once the nine caught us you know I just kind of settled in there so After the way the day went, all weekend long, me screwing up, uh, I'm happy because I got lane one, nailed the start, went into the corner with them, and uh, just tried to drive the best race we can. Yeah, and you did the best you could in that respect. What did you see on the outside there? Because what they're talking about is that one minute bearing out penalty on maybe the one here, the Graham trucking boat, for doing that. Otherwise, he may have won this race. They're not necessarily talking about how clean the start was. Well, it's funny because I radioed my guys and I said, after the nine went by me, I go, if Mike's not careful, the nine's gonna catch him. He's moving. He went by me like I was tied to a tree stump. Uh, I don't know where he was at the start, but I gotta thank all these crew guys. This is unfortunately the last race for the 17 guys. I was thankful to work with them all last year, so it's been a fun two, well, it's been a fun day after this final. <laughs> it hasn't been that fun in two weeks, partially, mostly my fault. Um, I gotta thank all the fans that signed the boat. We couldn't have done it without them. Silver Cloud, Fox Plumbing, we we got them unfortunately because of the 21 deal last weekend, but uh, they really helped up after I screwed up. We needed the money and uh, thank you to Fox Plumbing and the whole Pharaoh and last but not least, Nate Brown. Uh, I hope he enjoys his retirement. <laughs>
Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Back to you guys. I'm still there sorting it out, I'm sure. We're, we're, we're going to go talk to the officials here so we can get, find out. They are indeed, Chris. And the guy that Jeff Bernard was just talking about, the number nine boat that went blowing past him, that was John Zimmerman. He is still with our Alexis Smith in the pits. Yeah, we're kind of hanging off, uh, hang, hanging out on the shore, I should say. Uh, you're here with your wife. You're asking me if I heard anything. I'm asking you if you've heard anything. No idea. No idea. What's going through your mind right now? It'd be nice to win a race. It'd be nice to win at home at Seafair. Um, like to do it heads up, but out in front. But, you know, penalties are there for a reason. It'd, it'd be great to win. All right, so uh, penalties aside, you got to be pretty happy with how that race went. That was some great driving, some great maneuvering on your part. Uh, wh what's your perspective on how that went for you? Did it go to your plan? Everything You had that closed-door meeting, as Chip uh, suggested you do? Everything go according to plan? The plan, didn't, no, <laughs> nothing went according to plan on that. Um, I didn't get to get in position where I wanted to be due to the boat traffic. Um, we made the best of what we had, started on the outside. Those guys were pushing each other out to West Seattle. I don't know where they were going. But uh, so the op inside opened up and we made up some ground on them. And I mean, even if it finishes as is, we're happy with that finish. All right, the Rocket Man standing by with everyone else. We're just trying to sort this out and figure out who won. Back to you guys. Everyone is trying to sort this out, Alexis. And I, I turn to my two experts here because you guys have been involved in this race, in this uh, sport for, you know, three and a half, almost four decades. Sometimes these decisions take a little while. What's going on right now with uh, the, uh, the the race uh, uh, coordinators? What are they deciding? Well, for, uh, I guess I'll editorialize a little bit here. They need to make a decision. Um, we're in the entertainment business. Um, we're trying to get a race to the fans. They need to make a decision. Um, I've seen the evidence I would need to see to make a decision. Mark, what do you think? Well, uh, I think you're, uh, you're right. Um, the start, they would put it under review. They take a look at the videotape that comes right from the camera at the start finish line, the official's camera. That shouldn't be that hard to sort out. Frank. No, that, that looked pretty, I mean, I called it immediately. I said, I think they're over, and they, we didn't hear anything. We didn't hear it, but I don't think there's a whole lot being totally objective. I think two, at least two, maybe three boats jumped the gun, and Mike Kelly pushed him out. If I were the referee, I'd probably let it go because I don't think it affected. And we got uh, Alexis, I think, with Jimmy and John Zimmerman down in the pits. Right. Go ahead, Alexis. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I didn't even hear you guys toss it to me. I'm uh, listening in on the conversation between John, Jimmer, John uh, Zimmerman and Jimmy Shane, I should say. You came over, you shook his hand. Obviously not the finish you wanted today. What happened? Yeah, they're still trying to route through the results, but uh, the Alberto, uh, man, we ran hard in that final. We wanted to get it. Uh, the, the nine boat, what a, what a great race they ran. They got inside of us. Uh, I kind of got pushed out to the weeds there uh, pretty much the entire race, and I um, uh, couldn't do anything about it but we were fast we were catching them unfortunately on the last lap the canard wing broke and uh, i think i would have uh, i think i would have been able to finish a little bit better uh, if that canard wing wouldn't have broken um i was using it the entire race because i uh, i was flying the boat pretty hard yeah we saw that canard uh, when you came in that's in two pieces right now how hard of a fix is that is that something that's going to slow you down next weekend in san diego what do you think yeah, that's that's nothing man that's that's spare parts that's uh that's an easy fix not a problem uh, i'm really happy for the alberto guys uh to come back from what we went through on uh on saturday and uh the boats are running unbelievable so really happy for alberto really happy for my team really happy for my family to be here to see all this and uh really happy just to be a part of seafair all right great thank you so much jamie back to you guys Looks like all the drivers are kind of stood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chip Bernard was photobombing that interview. Yeah, right. But they're all kind of standing around there I, waiting for a decision. I think if I were an official, which I'm not, um, I would call him over at the start. But the pushing out, I would find him because I don't think it totally changed the result of the race. He probably pushed him out more than he should, but I wouldn't call it on him i'd probably give him a really nasty fine to make him think about it next time well the party continues out on the log boom and that probably won't go away for a while as folks are enjoying themselves some as we understand it a lot of folks out there have their ipads they've been able to stream live all of our broadcasts all day long so they possibly as well awaiting word the results of this race i mean when you've been out here since seven o'clock this morning in some cases you've been out here all weekend and you're still awaiting word. You're not going to go anywhere until you get that uh, final determination. No, and I'm going to editorialize a little bit sure. more. The officials have to make a call. I know it's hard, but you have to remember we're in the entertainment business here. You've got to make a call. Um, that you do the best you can. 
look at the evidence you've got and make the call. You can't sit here and argue about it forever. Race officials, I understand, I've just been told, are in their truck and they are discussing. And that means they are, again, looking at all the videotape. They're looking at every situation. They're going to open this door here shortly, I expect. And they're going to tell us who won the Albert Lee Appliance Seafair Cup. I've got to leave here in a few moments when we finish this broadcast and go down to this stage for the awards presentations. I don't want to get there and have nine people waiting to pick up the trophy, and we are still determining who is the winner. So well, this let, has got to happen here. Well, soon. well, let's play a game here. I, from the evidence that I saw here in our Cairo booth, yep. I think John Zimmerman won this race. Mark, what do you think? I agree, and I think the controversy or the decision making is maybe not on the start. But we're talking about when we saw Mike Kelly come down the front straightaway at one point, it looked like he was going way less than 80 miles an hour, one. Mm -hmm. And then there's this bearing out. Well, that that may be what they're really trying to decide right now. So who do you think won the race? John Zimmerman. Okay, Steve. Well, because you two think that. <laughs> I, you know, once we once we looked at that, and, and a few moments ago, uh, Mark and I looked at both looked at each other after we really looked at that start tape one more time and we both saw that other boat that yellow and white boat come in and hit it right on the money and we both said the same thing it could be somebody who we hadn't talked about almost the whole race until right at the end mark and it almost surprised all of us the way john zimmerman just flew around this course at the end of the race and made up all that uh, made up all that ground I got to go with you guys. I, I sort of think from what I could see on the tape, unless the officials see something else about that start that they, in fact, say, as they told us during the course of the race, they finally said it's a clean start. That came into my ear from our truck, which comes from the officials. If it was a clean start, then it's going to be J. Michael Kelly. You know, and John Zimmerman was down the pits. You know, I said, you know, I mean, we're going to do a little talk. They're going to throw it to us, and I'm going to ask you, you know, what, what you think you should do. And he looked at me and goes, I don't know what would you do <laughs> and and then he goes out and from my perspective he just drove a really great race well he didn't get the lane he wanted he was out in lane four but he didn't give up he, exactly he didn't give up and win and he you know he made a great comment when the inside opened up that's when he slid in there right. and made up all that ground he had the speed if he'd been on the inside and and had nailed the start right. <laughs> I, I think i think alexis asked him you know, so so did it go as planned he looked at her and said nothing no, went as no, planned not even close <laughs> I, you know and again i i feel bad for vince j there michael is. kelly is the winner, the winner of the race there it is right there so in fact it was a clean start as the official wow. told us and j michael jumps to the top of the grand trucking boat and it is celebration time for the number one boat, J. Michael Kelly is the winner of the Albert Lee Appliance Seafair Cup. Congratulations to him, and it took a long time. The officials looked at it every which way but south, and they figured it out, and they said J. Michael is the winner. Chris Francis is working his way there, and in fact, with a happy young man getting a big hug from friends and family and crew. Yeah. What, uh, what, a, what a relief, what a, what a load off. I, I know that's what you're gonna say. Yeah, he's, I think he might be more nervous now than he was when he was racing the boat. Yeah, yeah it's just, you know, you wanna find out if you wanted right off the bat so you can actually celebrate, but, you know, I've lived here my whole life and I grew up watching this and to actually say I've won in Seattle is just, you couldn't ask for much more. I mean, your hometown race in front of all your family and friends, your crew, uh, I got an amazing sponsor, Graham Trucking, my crew chief, Tom Anderson, and the list goes on and on. Uh, Ted Porter for bringing me back. Uh, it's know. a happy time. These yeah. guys are having a good time. <laughs> this guy's emotional, I know. First, hey, hey that, that start, we talked about it before. Um, we looked it over and over and over, and you didn't have the benefit of replay, but tell me again what you saw. Uh, well, you know, obviously we, we really strategized to get that lane one, and it, it worked out, and it couldn't have been any during the growing up any better and uh, we hit that star hit our marks and I just let it fly and I watched my timing clock and I saw the buoys and I saw it click down to zero and you know I went in the turn first place and I was just like from there on it was just drive and win and I did it you know my canard my front wing that helps keep the boat on the water it, it broke and it was stuck in lift mode the whole time so you know to do that and it was scary it was but you know, you we, just were, kept going. we couldn't we couldn't give up. It was first place. It, you know, I did it for these guys because they worked so hard on this thing, and 
I, I couldn't be more proud of to get the opportunity to drive for these guys. Guys up in the booth, uh, he told you what it means to him, and uh, he is the Albert Lee Cup Seafair champion. Thank you. And he drove, he dri did drive terrifically well all weekend long, and you know, videotape aside, what it may or may not have shown, the officials say J. Michael Kelly is your champion this year. And certainly a, a more deserving young man you will never find. Not only deserving, but immensely talented. If you go back and watch other seafarers, I've been beating this kid's drum for a long time. I don't know that I've ever seen a more gifted, just naturally gifted race driver than J. Michael Kelly. Every boat class that he's gotten in, he's been good in he's been kind of out of sync to be with the right team i think in unlimiteds but uh he's an intense fierce talented competitor and he looks to be very loyal to his team and his crew and his family and as he said greatest thing in the world for him to win in front of the family here in seattle he's a true racer yeah he is he he great day in the sunshine here it took us a little while to figure it out but the officials got it and now you have it. You have a champion here in Seattle. It is J. Michael Kelly, the winner of the Albert Lee Appliance Seafair Cup. The Albert Lee Appliance Seafair Cup Championship Race is presented by Whirlpool and KitchenAid. Create a luxury kitchen for less. Find great savings on KitchenAid and Whirlpool appliances at Albert Lee. And is presented for Seafair by Albert Lee Appliance. We're more than just high end for over 75 years. Congratu congratulations to J. Michael Kelly and the Graham Trucking Team. There's your GEICO photo finish. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com today. There will be celebrating tonight the Graham Team with J. Michael Kelly at the controls, your Seafair champions. Congratulations to you and all who helped put this on. And uh, you were watching just like everybody else because you're a big fan of this sport. Absolutely. You know, the racing was great. It was fantastic. And we saw the little jockeying of position. It was just, it was a great race. Great weekend. I think everyone should have a, had a great time, I'm sure. By the way, if you ever have the opportunity, go over to Albert's house. He'll invite you over and let him put on the grill for you his desserts unbelievably brought some to the booth for oh okay sorry it'll just be for us all right here we go time now for third place for the 2014 albert lee appliance seafair cup and that goes to the u6 oberto and jimmy shane third place in this year's seafair regatta congratulations j michael kelly I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Jimmy Shane, I know, Jimmy Shane, Alberto, congratulations on third place. Good job. Oh, no dessert for you tonight. Jimmy, congratulations. Great race, and you, it was, it's, it's terrific three or four laps of racing there until that uh, canard broke, as we have seen in a long time. I'm really glad that uh, we put the show on that we could for you guys. This is what this sport's about. We wanted to come in and put on a really good show for you guys, and I really think we accomplished it. So I really have to thank Alberto. I have to thank my team, my crew. We came back from getting a little bit more damage this weekend, and they put the boat back together 100%, and I drove the freaking propeller off the boat in that final. So uh, I'm really happy for my crew, really happy for my team. I want to thank all the owners, thank Seafair, thank all the volunteers. I have to thank my wife and my son, Colton. Uh, they give me all the support in the world. My family's here, my mom and my dad. So thank you guys, everybody. Art Oberto was up there signing autographs with me. What an amazing guy. This is for Art. Thank you so much. I wish I could have got the win for you, but uh, thank you so much. Jimmy, congratulations, and thanks to you. Second place for the 2014 Albert Lee Appliance Seafair Cup goes to the U9 team, Les Schwab Tires, Team Red Dot, and John Zimmerman. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. John, second place, and as I said when you were up here a moment ago, that run to the finish was as good as we have seen in a long, long time here in Seattle. Oh, the Les Schwab, Tire, Les Schwab Tires team, Red Dot team, um, they did an awesome job. They gave me a great boat. Um, all of our sponsors, Seafair, Albert Lee, everybody. We appreciate everything that everybody's done for us. Um, I got to thank my wife and my son, Jack. I haven't been home much lately. We've been fixing the boat a lot. So we're going to take a couple of weeks off and go enjoy life. Enjoy it with the family. John, congratulations. Thank you.
And now, and it took, as we said, a few minutes and a look at the videotape, but we do that in football too, right? Go to the replay. First place, the winner of the 2014 Albert Lee Appliance Seafair Cup, the U1 Graham Trucking Team, J. Michael Kelly. Congratulations on winning the Albert Lee Cup. Congratulations. J. Michael. What's going through your mind right now? You were pretty emotional out on that finger up here when you were talking to our Chris Francis. Oh, what amazing feeling. Uh, hometown race, hometown sponsor with Graham Trucking. Uh, this has been a lifelong dream of mine. I'm one of the lucky few that get the opportunity to drive one of these fast boats. I got one of the most amazing crews in the world, uh, crew chief Tom Anderson. My, my entire crew, uh, the entire crew on the second bo boat, uh, my teammate, Cal Phipps, I couldn't ask for a better teammate, uh, Ted Porter and his family. My wife, Angela, my little boy, Carson, my dad, my mom, and all of, all of the Grand Trucking people, thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, I gotta thank Albert Lee Appliance. Uh, you guys definitely are a big part of this and help this sport uh, live and see fair. Um, first place, I, just a dream come true. Thank you. Go enjoy it with your team, Jay Michael. I'm gonna step aside for the pictures we have talked about here in Seattle. The young guns moving up. The torch has been passed. Here are your young guns in unlimited hydroplane racing. Your Albert Lee Appliance Seafair Cup champions. Guys, thank you so very much. Congratulations to all of you.